Hey, what's up and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about this knife, my absolute favorite knife, the ZT-0350. But it's got one major flaw that I hate about this thing. Let's find out what it is. All right, roll that clip. Fair warning, I love this knife. This review will be incredibly biased. It's basically going to be me gushing over this knife for five minutes. I believe Canyonian forged it in the fires of Mount Olympus for me. Not you, not your best friend, or even your dog. Just me. It's as if Canyonian peered deep into my soul and asked me, what do you want, Jeff? Do you want eternal life? Do you want clear Pepsi back? Or do you want to air assault from a gunship into the pits of hell, dual wielding two of these bad boys? Clearly, I've chosen the latter. I'm a sucker for a drop point recurve blade. It's my favorite style combo. Just something about it. It looks aggressive, utilitarian. Hell, it just looks plain sexy. And most blades, I went off for a straight edge. On this knife, though, I grabbed one with no question. Great job, Mr. Onion. And sir, if you're listening to this, I live about 30 minutes away from you. You know, just in case you want to grab a beer and spill all your insider secrets or something. Anyway, I really like the element of style and utility that the serrated edge adds to the overall appearance of this knife. This knife features Ken Onion's speed safe. I love the way this knife just fires open with authority with a flip of a flipper or a thumb stud and locks immediately into place. It opens fast and secure, for the most part, every single time. I've had no misfires in my two months of use. To close the knife, you simply press on the liner lock and pull the blade and shut it. Of course, if you don't want to shut it like that, you can always slam the nose of the blade on the side of something and close it that way. Yeah, that's right. The defect that has been well documented and shown to ZT is still there. It's been a known defect for years and yet it still persists. This is a safety problem, not a convenience thing, an appearance thing, or a nitpick. Under the right circumstances, you could cut your piggies off. This is a glaring issue and it's why I can't re recommend this knife wholeheartedly. I did reach out to Zero Tolerance concerning this issue and I haven't heard anything back. That's, you're probably wondering why I'm asking about this old knife when I should be talking about the 308. But just bar beware, you could cut your fucking hand off if you buy this knife. That said, this is still a well-built knife aside from the potential finger-chopping hazard. The quality is outstanding for the price. This is a super tight knife. There's zero blade play in either direction. Everything is just milled to perfection. The back spacer is smooth and lines up perfectly with the scales and the liner. I really dig the color options for this knife. There's a lot of them and I'm sure you'll find something you like. This is my ideal EDC knife. However, it is a tad on the heavy side. I can see some people not opting for this knife as their EDC, especially compared to a small profile gentleman carry or something like CVV Elementum or something. However, for me, my love of subdued tactile knives that look like they could stand up to pretty heavy use, this knife fits the bill. For the lanyard lovers out there, there's a lanyard hole, albeit a little bit tiny. The belt clip is another place this knife falls short. It's anything but deep carry. I wish it was a true deep carry and I don't have to go to the aftermarket to get it that way. However, it can be moved in four locations, left and right, and a tip up and tip down carry. This knife features CPM S30V steel with a hardness of 60 HRC. S30V steel is extremely durable, corrosion resistant, and wear resistant. This is a great steel for this price range. I like this steel, it's easy to sharpen and holds an edge well. I've used this knife off and on for a few months now and it's still pretty much factory sharp. I've had no issues with chipping on the edge or scratching up the DLC, although it will eventually. In my opinion, the G10 texturing on it is perfect, and it's one of my favorite features of this knife. I've noticed that the texture on the Tiger Stripe model is G10 and it's a bit smoother though. The liner locks are only milled out one spot, the rest of it is solid, adding to the weight but also adds to the sturdiness of the knife. The ergonomics of this knife are pretty much perfect in my large size hand, no real hot spots detected. It feels great choking up on or with just a standard grip. The jipping is aggressive and bold, which I like. Not crazy rough in your hands, but enough to feel sturdy in any weather condition. On the back side of the knife is more jimping for added grip while stabbing. This is a clever design not seen in most knives. The G10 texturing feels great and non-slip. This knife just feels comfortable and secure in all positions. Why 4 out of 5 stars? Well, I wish it was just a tad bigger. I ran out of finger resting room a little bit on the back end. I feel this knife is meant for medium to medium large hands. During my cut test with this knife, I was pleased with all cutting tests. It didn't seem to struggle with any of the tests or the day-to-day -day use. Day-to-day use for me is cutting up in packages and breaking them down. 
pierces well, slices well, and hacks well. It's a great all-around workhorse of a knife, especially if you opt for the serrated option. Right out of the box, this is a razor sharp blade and it stays that way for a long time. It took about two months of daily use before it needed to be sharpened. 